John Arthur Lanham Jr., United States Navy, World War II. I had the great honor and privilege of meeting John and his family and interviewing him on May 26, 2011 up in Traverse City, Michigan. It was a great time. Very fond memories of my time up there with John and learning about his perspective of the World War II as a Navy sailor. He served in the United States Navy. After the war, he served in the Naval Reserves and went on to live a great full life. And him and his wife were married 59 years, him and Nancy. And I, did, I miss him. John passed away in 2014 and like with all my veterans, I miss him. I know they're in heaven waiting for us. Great reunion up there with all the veterans and it's gonna be great to see them again. I wanna thank Timothy McIntree for sponsoring John's story. Thank you, Timothy, for stepping forward. Thank you, sir, for showing your patriotism, your commitment to our country and to our veterans and for helping me with my work. Folks, if you'd like to sponsor one of my stories, there's a lot of them out there in my archives and I would encourage you to do so or you can help donate towards my work. There's information in the video description and comment section of this video or you can go to LarryCapetto.com. So sit back and relax, have a great day, invite the family, friends in, let's listen to John Lanham talk, tell his whole complete unedited story that he told me 11 years ago. And it's a great one, folks. Share it, subscribe to this channel, and let's keep this thing going. God bless you. Just tell me how old you are now, John. 83. Be 84 in September. And what year did you go into the military? Uh, 75. 45. 45. So you were right at the end of the war then? Yeah. What branch of the military did you go in? Navy. Mm -hmm. I forgot. I saw the picture, so that's yeah. a good question. Okay. And you, you enlisted? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was 17. Did you go to Great Lakes Trainer? Yeah. Yes, Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. What were you trained to do, John? Well, in boot camp, of course, we were trained to do everything, but uh, then we went to am amphibious training in Coronado, California. Okay. And uh, then we went to Hawaii, mm -hmm. and then they put me on a minesweeper. So I was on the USS Devastator, mm -hmm. a minesweeper. Mm -hmm. How long was basic training? Six weeks? Six, eight weeks? six weeks, yes. Was it tough? Do you remember it being hard? Not for me. Mm -hmm. I'd done just the way they said to do it and done what they said. No problem. Other guys did. Do you remember where you were when Pearl Harbor was attacked? You yeah. Know, tell me what you remember about Pearl Harbor. Well, I was uh, up at Dodge Spring and that, I had my dog and we were just going for a walk. And um, when I come home and mom said, the Japs attacked Pearl Harbor. And I said, where's Pearl Harbor? And I went and got some geography books and, uh, <clears throat> and found where Pearl Harbor was. And so I kept up pretty close. They say a young boy at that age, the wars affect them more than most people. Mm -hmm. So you were probably still, you were probably high school at that time, not, but not even high school in 41 probably. No, no, I wasn't in high school yet. So a lot of people joined the military after Pearl Harbor was attacked. Yes, yeah. yeah. So as you're going through high school, the war's going on, um, are you anticipating maybe having to go or what's your thoughts oh, on yeah. school? Oh uh, yeah, we, we figured we would have to go because we knew it was a tough war. Back home though, were you keeping um, abreast of what was going oh, yes. on in the Pacific and yeah. Europe? I had maps of the world and use pins just like they do and and just kept abreast of it pretty 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 close. Mm -hmm. So as you get out of high school were you deciding you're gonna go into the, the Navy or how did that happen? Oh I was wanted to go in before I did, but my mom wouldn't let me because I was only seventeen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, when I got out of high school uh, she signed that I could go. I was only 17. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So were you ready to go see the world or how did you feel at that time? Scared. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was uh, 
something you had to do. I mean, I didn't look forward to it, but I knew I had to go, or I felt I had to go. What, mo what month did you join up? In July. Okay. The war was going full blast in Germany, or in uh, Japan yet, but uh, they hadn't dropped the bombs yet. Mm -hmm. So did you, where were you when they dropped the bombs? Do you remember where you were? Uh, yeah, I was still home. Mm -hmm. See, I signed up in July, and then they dropped the bombs in August, mm -hmm. and then they called me a couple weeks after they dropped the bomb. So the war was basically over. But was it September 2nd? Mm -hmm. uh, the war was over. I was in boot camp then, and it was a hot day. So how did that feel, being in boot camp, the war is over with Japan? Was it like, hey, this, this isn't going to be as bad as I thought? Or, I mean, what, what, what do you remember thinking? Didn't think much about it. It kept you busy. So what, where did, what did you train to do? To, uh, you were on a ship or what? Yeah, uh, I was a mechanic, engineer. What, what kind of uh, ships or boats did you take care of? Well, <clears throat> when uh, I worked in the engine room, done what they wanted, everything. But when we were in Pearl Harbor, I was on a um, engineer on a motor whale boat. And the coxswain stands up in the back and he signals with the bells. <clears throat> and uh, we go where he wants to go. It was interesting. I got to see all of Pearl Harbor. I mean, places where most people didn't see. Did you ever work on a landing craft? Like in the, you said amphibious training, the, the, the Higgins boats? This, yeah, the LCVP. The plywood boats that were used in a lot of the invasions? Yeah. Because they had the coxswain, the ramp goes down yeah. and all that. Yeah, they trained us to go in, then we had to take it in. And I made the mistake of going in and coming off just like they wanted. And they said, you're good enough, you don't have to practice. Others got to do it three or four times. But I only got to do it once. So were you stationed in Hawaii then? Is that yes, you yeah. For your whole career or your, the whole time you are in the military? Or oh, no, no, I went, got to Hawaii in January of... Uh, 46, and then we came back, and I was in in, in the <clears throat> office where, and the rest of my guys went through amphibious training. They went on to Anahuitoc, which I wanted to do, but uh, I was put in the office there, and then when time come to go back to the States, I was put on a ship. So you were in two years, four years? How long were you? Oh, no, there? I was in about a year. But I was in nine years altogether in the reserves, mm -hmm. the Naval Reserve. I just thought I would get called up, but I didn't. didn't. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when the Korean War started, I was going to volunteer to go, to go but I met this girl, mm -hmm. and I married her. <laughs> Is that how it happened, huh? So where'd you meet her at? Well, I was working with her dad for John Hadlam, and uh, we went up squirrel hunting, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, her brother asked me if I wanted to go to the dances with him, and uh, they had you know, dances in Empire for the Air Force. There's the radar station up above us, and uh, <clears throat> I said, yeah. Well, when she walked out of the house, she had a blue taffeta dress on, and I thought, that's the girl I'm going to marry. How did you know that? I did. I don't know. I just thought, that's the girl I'm going to marry. And you've been married how many years? Almost 57. Mm -hmm. So how do you stay married 57 years? Is that hard to do? <laughs> Not really. What's the secret of... Along well, way. it's just like you say, yes, dear. No, you, can't, you can't use that. Give me another one. I'm, I'm beginning to believe that. I don't know if I'm going to believe that. No, it was just give and take. Yeah, that's good. If you love somebody, it's easy. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. I talked to your wife. You have four kids. Yeah. And 
I, I know Peg's not the favorite, so who's the no. favorite? <laughs> <laughs> It'd be hard to say. I haven't met the other three, but I know that she can't be the favorite. <laughs> She's the most particular. I'm the oldest. Oh, well, take this picture again. You come off this head. I really love that. That's a compliment. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's interesting talking to you because you know the war's over. Yeah. You joined the military. It's kind of like did we just come home, or was there still a lot of military presence in the Pacific? And oh yeah, there was still military in the Pacific. But we had a. We won the war, but there was still a lot to do in the peace in peacetime. Mm -hmm. Did you leave Hawaii? Did you go farther overseas, or did you? No, I went back to uh, Long Beach, and from Long Beach up to Sa up to San Francisco, and um, we tied up under Pier Twenty, and then one day the captain came to me and told me to. I was ordered to go to um, Long Beach and help bring a YMS up. Well, the way the bureaucracy works, I went to and reported to this uh, station, and he said, gave me 48 hours leave, or 28 hours, excuse me, 24 hours leave to report back. So I went back to the ship and got mail, and the captain see me, he says, what? on earth are you doing back here? You're supposed to be on a plane going down to Long Beach. And I said, well, they just give me 24 hour liberty. And he said, oh, God. Yeah. So the next day, I got there, and then they put me on a troop train going to Long Beach. I got to Long Beach. The ship had already sailed. So I went back to Long Beach, to uh, San Francisco, to Treasure Island, reported on board the ship, and it was YMS. Wood, wooden boat, and uh, I asked the uh, exec, I said, could I just go back to the uh, my ship because I didn't see any point in all that bureaucracy going paperwork. So he said, yeah, I just go back to your ship. And again, what kind of ships were you around? What, what was well, the, the assault landing crafts, were they? There were the other ones you were working on? Yeah, we were uh, basically trained to uh, repair, operate the uh, Gray Marine Diesel. Well, and that was on the LCB. Yeah. yeah. So you, when I was talking last night about the Higgins boat, you know what I was talking yeah. about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they were they, they fit what about thirty troops, about approximately thirty people. Twenty thirty. I don't know, I never had a full one. Wasn't that a plywood? Yeah, plywood? it's plywood, yeah. yeah. I imagine the bow up above in the front was uh, steel. Otherwise, when they shot at it, it bullets would right, go right through. Mm -hmm. Have you ever, do you have a favorite war movie that you've watched, or do you watch war movies? <laughs> a few. <laughs> uh, you've got a collection that's What's your favorite war movie? <laughs> Band of Brothers, probably. Oh, that's good. The others are more, more, more make-believe war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you see the Pacific? The miniseries, the Pacific? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you like that? Yeah, it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, you, did you have friends in school that went into the war that maybe didn't come back? No. Everybody came back that I knew. Have you ever been to a national cemetery? Uh, probably around here, but have you been to Arlington or uh, a really big national cemetery? Not that I remember. I'd like to go to Arlington someday, but I know I never will. You ever been over to France? Over no, Europe? no. I never went east. We've been down to the Caribbean and Gettysburg. But, uh, so why, why did you join the Navy, um, that particular branch of the military? Well, I wouldn't have to crawl through mud. <laughs> <laughs> you like the water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have a boat? Uh, yes, I got a boat, but... An LCVP? <laughs> I wish I had one. 
I want to take a ride on him if you have one. Yeah. Imagine those are kind of expensive to run. I don't know if you can find one anymore, can you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, a guy in Beulah, or, yeah, Beulah, had a duck. That's an amphibious, amphibious truck. They used it to haul supplies from ships into shore and then back up a couple miles inland, then back. How much training did you have on the, the Higgins boat? Did you understand why they used them or the importance of that in, a, in an amphibious landing? Yeah, it's the best boat I've seen for what it was designed for. To get them in quick, is that the whole thing? And yeah, you could load it up with troops, make it the uh, beach, drop the ramp, they could run it off. And some of them, had uh, the guys had to jump over the side but uh, that was not near as good as it would, was to uh, where they could just run out. Mm -hmm. I don't, maybe you didn't know this, but the Higgins boat actually was kind of, kind of copied off the Japs landing boat. They had the ramp before. And the guy, um, Higgins, somebody told him about that. They'd done a little research on him. And Higgins came up with this boat. Oh, Hitler called him the second Noah. Yeah. Because of what he did. He was even aware of what he had done. But, uh, so you like the water? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever like to have been in a submarine? Been interesting. Mm -hmm. I've probably been pretty scared. Um. You know, I, I go into schools a lot. I talked a little bit last night about yeah. taking these stories into schools. Do you think that's important that our younger people Defin learn? And do you think they're learning today anything? They should re Don't forget what has happened in the past. I, uh, there was an old saying, you can't change the spots on a leopard. So you can't change the spots on a leopard. You can't really change Germany and Japan. Still, the motive is still there. Maybe I'd feel different, but I don't. How do you feel about being a, a you're, you're a World War II veteran? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Do you have a lot of pride in being a veteran? Definitely. Have people over the years thanked you for your service? Lately, yes. Mm -hmm. Lately, yes. Much more so than after when I got out. People didn't think too much about veterans, but lately the emphasis has been on thanking veterans for what they've done. When you see that picture of yourself, that Navy picture that they showed me, yeah. what do you think about when you see yourself back then? <laughs> Scared young kid. Yeah. It's kind of hard to believe, believe you take a guy like that and send him off to war to kill people, but. That's what's done. What do you think our country, John, should remember about World War II? Uh, I don't understand what you... Well, I mean, looking back in history, yeah. as we think back, what, what, what should we remember about World War II? Remember how they treated us, and then if they get a chance to do it, they'll do it again. Or that's what I feel. Not so much the Germans, but Japan, the, or the Orientals have no, re, <clears throat> no real regard for life. I mean, the uh, wars they won because of the uh, human wave. They figure they can overrun a position by throwing enough men at it. Maybe you get a thousand kills. They, they don't care. Do you have any ill feelings about the Japanese people today at all? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been over in that area of the world? Just to Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. Even after the war, you haven't gone over anywhere? No. Well, we've been to Pearl Harbor several times. Okay. It's beautiful. Not as beautiful as it was in uh, 46, but just beautiful, yeah. They, 
a headline in the record ago one time said, uh, well, it was in 1991, that uh, Japs bombed Pearl Harbor. And below it, another headline, Japs by Pearl Harbor. <laughs> that was what was doing. Does Memorial Day mean a lot to you? Like Monday we observe Memorial Day. What does that day mean to you? Well, I know we should remember, remember more. Remember the past, remember the guys who got killed. How about Veterans Day? Is that a special day for you? Yeah, you get a free free dinner over at, <laughs> at Rico's. <laughs> at Rico's, they have a free dinner for veterans. <laughs> That's not what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah, it does. It, it does to me. Like June 6th, I always remember it. Other people don't even think about it. I think about it, boy. Yeah? Most people don't. I think in time, we're, you're hearing less and less and less about it, you know? Yeah, On yeah. The news and, That's right. and things, but it was a tremendous day in our history. Yeah, it should be. You know, I heard on the radio one day, I find it hard to believe, but it's just, they asked high school kids, what caused World War II? They said, because America bombed, uh, dropped the atom bomb on Tokyo, and they came back and bombed Pearl Harbor. I find that hard to believe. People could be that dumb. Well, unless they're being taught, they're not going to learn. I mean, you know. Um, mm. Have you ever been to Washington, D.C. and seen the World War II Memorial? No, I haven't. I've been closest to, I've been with the Gettysburg. Do you guys have the World War II honor flight out of here that takes veterans back to D.C.? Mm -hmm. Do mm -hmm. you have that in the Buses, center? yeah. Buses. Ted Shaw with Brown and Lumber. Cool. He's done it a couple times. Yeah. So your 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 experience now you were said you were just in a year right yeah now how come just a year well I was I signed up for the duration plus six in other words after the six months after September second when the war was over and so from six months that day I was supposed to come home um, I would have stayed in if they had indeed with me but. The emphasis was everybody goes home. You thought about the Air Force too, right, Dad? But there was a reason you couldn't get in the Air Force? The what? The Air Force. You had talked about that too at one point in time, but they didn't have training going on or something, you said? You wanted to go in the Air Force? But yeah. Didn't. In 1944, uh, I was 17 on September 13th, 1944. And I had to graduate from high school, and so I had enough credits by January. And then I uh, tried to join the Air Force, but they said they weren't taking any, any more men for pilot training. Mm -hmm. Maybe I told you that, I don't remember. So you're born on September 13th? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was born on September 13th. 1927, and the year I was 13, on Friday the, Friday the 13th, I had mumps, measles, chicken pox, broken arm, uh, appendicitis, and what else was it? Oh, broken nose, and uh, all, all within six months. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Makes you wonder. So how did your military experience change you? Did it make you a better person or was it a good experience for you? It was a good experience. I would have went in before I did if I could have. I mean, if I had been old enough. These people that, uh, we had one guy over there in Empire that was, a, uh, we, they was draft dodgers. And uh, he, he done everything he could to stay out of it. But, uh, and his brother did everything he could to get in. 
he only had one eye. And so when he went in for the eye exam, he uh, memorized the eye chart. So his one eye didn't see, he couldn't see anything out. it. And he passed. <laughs> wow. He wanted to stay in or go in. That's quite a story. In one story, I'll tell you, I was the engineer on a motor whaleboat. And one night, they uh, called on the PA system, uh, the crew to the motor whaleboat, and uh, went running to the boat, and a guy was on the deck, just thrashing around, and they was trying to hold him down, and he'd slashed his wrist. And of course everybody was trying to grab him, hold him down. I grabbed him, hold him down. <clears throat> and he looked at me and he thought that was his wife. He started saying, I'm sorry, honey, I'm sorry, honey. And stopped fighting it at all and held me, held me. It was kind of embarrassing. And I, I Everybody else let him go, and here I was holding him. And uh, the officer was there. He said, uh, st "Stay with him. Uh, we'll get another engineer." <laughs> mm -hmm. So I stayed with him, and so they got in the ambulance. And uh, I kept telling him, "He'll be all right. He'll be all right." And he kept telling me, "I was sorry. All I could say he must have had an ugly wife, but." <laughs> But then when they got back to the ship, I thought I'd get a lot of razzing about it, but nobody said anything. I don't know what happened to the guy or not. So you said you were in the reserves for how long? Nine years altogether. Mm -hmm. And you didn't go to Korea? No. Yeah. As I say, I met this girl. <laughs> that did it. Her brother, her brother went to Korea. So what do you what do you remember about the Korean War? I mean, did you hear much about it back here at home? Or oh yeah, it was an ugly war. I mean, they, they got up the Chusan River to war, and the Chinese came into it and pretty well messed it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did you think of Harry Truman? The buck stops here. <laughs> You know, Harry was, in my opinion, a really a good guy. Any thoughts on General MacArthur? Oh yeah, during the war he was a great guy. I think Truman done wrong by firing him, but you gotta, when you're in the military, you do what your boss says. You knew about the impending invasion of Japan, right? Yeah. If we would have dropped the bombs, we yeah. would have invaded Japan. Oh, yes. Tell me what you what you remember or know about that. Well, we hardly believed it, that the bomb could be that powerful. And it dropped, I don't think Japan believed it either, because they had to drop the second one. And then they quit. I mean, they were going to quit anyway. I mean, it was starvation. They were in a bad, bad way, actually. Any intelligent person would have quit. But the Orientals don't uh, necessarily use a lot of intelligence when fighting a war. Yeah. How about Vietnam? And Vietnam came along, were you interested in Vietnam, what was going on all those years, or did you maybe not want to even? Oh, yeah. I, I, I think if they had let the military take care of it, they would have done it, but they tried to get politics in it. And a politician never won a war. Yeah, that's right. How about what's happening today in the world? What are your thoughts on Iraq, Afghanistan? Well, you've got to stop it somewhere. I mean, this, this terrorist going and flying planes into two buildings, what sort of 
they would say, Allah, oh, all for Allah, that guy. Um, a guy in, in the plane, that was flying that plane, he was probably screaming, Allah be praised, or something like that, just before he hit. And uh, I don't think Allah would approve of it, but. Is that their God? Yes, their God is Allah. Allah is God. Allah is the same as God. There's only one God. That's right. Let me ask you about freedom, John. You hear me talk about freedom, and they say freedom's not free. You hear That's that? right. So tell me what your what what do, what does freedom mean to you? You can do pretty well what you want to do without government interfering. And you don't have to worry about the police knocking on the door at night and dragging it out of bed. And basically, you can do what you want to do with the reasons, as long as you're not affecting the health and welfare of somebody else. How about the American flag? What does that mean and represent to you? Beautiful flag. We fly it pretty well every day. The other, other day the, the rope broke and it come, come down. So we had to get a new rope and put that up and fly it. But my wife puts it, usually puts it up every morning. Means a lot, huh? Yeah, it's beautiful. And I think up on um, the cemetery up here, the VFW puts up uh, how many flags is it? A, a lot of flags every day on Memorial Day. I wish I could help them, but I can't. So what kind of work did you do after the war? Carpentry. A builder, well, I worked for a carpenter for, for a few years. And then my brother and I worked together to start building houses. And then my brother said he didn't have to work like that. And so he quit. And I kept building houses and maintaining cottages and farming. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have a farm? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where, here? Yeah, in Northern Illinois County near Maple City. How large is your farm? Well, we got a 80 acres that we live on that we farm. Then we got 40 acres of woods and hills. And a beautiful place to go, but we can't do it for anything other than the trees that are on it. So what do you grow? Corn, hay, oats, stuff like that. Great. And we also have an orchard, about four acres. Peach orchard? We have a few peaches, but yeah. the market dropped out of peaches. Uh, we used to sell, well, one year we sold 12 bushels to one woman. And when we quit raising them, heck, we couldn't sell 12 bushels the whole season. They want them by the pound. So someday when you're gone, hopefully it's a long time, but what do you want, what do you want your family to remember about you? Sounds corny, but I was that I was a patriot. That's a good. That I thought the nation comes first. Do you talk much about your war experiences, or is it just something every once in a while? Do you ever think about it? I think about it a lot, but I don't talk about it too much. I have a lot of war, war movies. And in fact, I have a couple of yours. Do you? Uh, yeah, if you bring them in, yeah, she would like to get an autograph. Yeah, and, great. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see Saving Private Ryan? Do you remember that movie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty, pretty good movie. Yeah. yeah. It's probably more truth to it than a lot of the other movies. I agree. Did a good job. Yeah. We had a, a friend that was on the Guadalcanal, mm -hmm. and uh, 
He said it was pretty, pretty terrible because they didn't know whether they were going to come down at night and invade them and try to drive them off or what. So. Well, that was at the beginning of the war, Guadalcanal. Yeah. yeah. Did you know anything about Iwo Jima? I mean. Yeah, my brother, my brother in law was on Iwo Jima. Your brother in law was? Yeah. Wow. Did, Third wave. Did he make it off? Yeah. yeah. Is he still alive? Yeah. He's over here in Gun Eagle. So, what did he ever tell you about Iwo Jima? Did he talk Not about Not much. Him? He was a Marine? Yeah, he was in the Marines, yeah. Yeah, he was he was in the air on the air arm. The, the air or not the Air Force, but the Marines mm -hmm. uh arm of planes. Mm -hmm. So there at one time when the Japs they made that Benjai charge on the the Marines. I, I don't know if he was there or not, but he's never, never said. Mm -hmm. I did a couple of documentaries on Iwo Jima. I don't know which ones you guys have, but. Uh, oh, I got Omaha Beach. That's good. Yeah. Tell me about Carl and Fred, and they were instrumental of you going into the military. Was that it? Or? Uh, yeah. Well, my brother Carl was five years older than I am. My brother Fred was ten years older, and they were in the Coast Guard. And my brother Carl was, uh, they used to, he said it was, was a weather ship near the Azores. And uh, he said we'd swim in the ocean out there, right in the middle of the ocean. The water was warm. But after, when the war started, they were sent to escort convoys from Reykjavik, Iceland, to Murmansk, Russia. And uh, he said one time they seen two, these two streaks of air bubbles coming at them. The torpedoes, and he said, right at us. And he said, my God, we were so scared we couldn't move. And he, but he said, the guy must have set the torpedoes to go too deep because they went right under the ship. And he said, we would have been blown to pieces. And uh, then he came home and got married and went back and was sent to the Pacific to... Uh, put it on an oil tanker, a smaller oil tanker, and they, I think it was an AO. And uh, he um, said that one day the uh, seven kamikazes were coming right at him, and he said their destroyer escort got the range and shot all seven of them down, one right after the other. He said, we were screaming bloody, bloody murder. And, uh, he said, well, all we had to protect us was a 50 caliber machine gun. And that had been not much protection. We said we got, we, that destroyer got every one of them. And then my brother Fred, he was, let's see, I can't think of the name of transport, troop transport, tr transporting British troops to uh, Singapore before the war. We weren't in the war. He was transporting British troops. And he said, then the war started. And uh, he said they took the troops off our ship and put them on a couple fast transports and got to Singapore just in time for Singapore to surrender. Those guys are all were prisoners. And then he went up to Bombay and he was up to Bombay and then come back home. And uh, then he got married, and he spent most of the war on the Great Lakes uh, at the, the stations. And they're both being in and influenced me quite a bit, wanting to go in. I felt, as I say, this is corny, but I felt it was my duty. And during wartime, I feel it's everybody's duty to help when I whether, whether it's a just war or not, it's still our country. That's good. Thank you. You're welcome.
Well, at the end of my films, I always have a, the veteran salute into the camera. John, can you do that for me when I ask you to? Let me turn the camera back. Okay, look, look right in here. Go ahead, right in here. Go ahead. Give me a salute into the camera. Okay, perfect. Thank you. We're going to take some pictures of you, Sister.